Hi, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday Night Oasis. It is Wednesday, November 30th. It's the last day of the month. Next week, the Christmas season begins. I guess it's already began, apparently, because uh, stores are shopping, people are shopping, stores are selling, and, and all that stuff is going on. So, uh, uh, again, it's it's November 30th, and we're going to start a brand new series today um, for Wednesday night, and I want to call it "Opening Up Your Bible." As we as we look at 2023, uh, I want us to have a theme for the next year, and it's growing in the knowledge of God. How do we grow? deeper in our relationship with God? How do we know him on a deeper level? How do we walk in his ways on a deeper level? How, how do we hear from God better than ever before? How, how do we have more of God in our lives? I, I think in the, in the world that we live in, we need to know God on a deeper level than we do now because uh, we're finding ourselves in the place where, man, uh, people are going to be looking for answers. They're looking for it now. And I want us to be people who know the answer. So this, this series on Wednesday night is going to be about a five-part series. So for the next five Wednesday evenings, we're going to be looking at opening your Bible. And how do we, uh, how do we study God's Word. We're going to look at the book of James together for the next five weeks. And, and we're going to do it with two goals in mind. So if you have a notebook or, you know, if you're doing that at home, write this down. So the, the, the series is titled Open Your Bible. And the first, the first part of it, the first message of the series is what I'm calling inductive study. Man, that really sounds hard. It really sounds uh, very spiritual, and it sounds very intellectual. Inductive study. And so here, here are two goals that I want us to have in our mind for the series leading into the new year, right? Here's what it is. How do you read and understand Scripture? How do you and I read and understand Scripture? Believe it or not, there are many people who are avoiding the Bible because they have it in their mind that they can't understand what God is trying to say, that they need somebody to interpret it for them. And, and I'll have you know that it, although it's not bad to have people help you with it, to, to give you their point of view on it. God wants you to know that it's meant for you to read, not for someone to read to you or tell you about. Now, I won't even begin by getting into some of the churches out there that say, well, don't read your Bible because it's going to confuse you if you do. Uh, here's the truth about studying God's Word. The more you do it, the better you'll understand it. And so, although you may have been a person who really hasn't opened your Bible, I want to encourage you to start today. James chapter 1, that's where we're going to start with. And you could just do it right along with us. So you be a part because... Um, what I'm going to encourage you to do is to read Scripture on a daily basis. Take time to read and interact with the Word but by meditating on it, by doing different things we're going to talk about. It will challenge you and it will help you to grow in your walk with Jesus and give you an opportunity to do more as a Christ follower than maybe you're doing today. And so some people say, wait a minute, uh, 
Uh, I meet with a group of Christians every week, and that's awesome because uh, I've changed because of it. So meeting with a group of other people, that's an awesome thing. Don't change that. Or I come to church every Sunday, and I, I try to watch these on Wednesday nights when I can if I have nothing else to do. And so uh, I think I'm learning out of those messages. Well, you are learning out of those messages. Keep doing it and making a point to, to watch Wednesday nights too because that's a little more in-depth than what we do on Sunday morning. See, although the different things that we can do is great and it should be part of our spiritual walk, there's nothing more powerful to our walk than to spend one-on-one -on -one time with God in his word and listening for his voice, meditating on what we're reading. Now, the truth is that you can grow by coming to church on Sunday, by hearing Wednesday night's message. You can grow by being a part of a Bible study. But if you want to grow to the full, it's going to happen when you make a decision to spend time with God on your own. That's where the growth truly will come, come from. See, you might say, I was once closer to God than I am right now. And if that's true, then this series is going to help you. If you look at your spiritual walk with God and something you once had is missing, then this series just might help you. I think it might. If you're not consistently reading God's word, then this is really going to help you to do that. Because I, I want to encourage you to be doing that along with us as we study in James. Now, if you would say that the time I spend with the Lord is reserved for Sunday service, I get that, but he wants more of you. He wants to spend more time with you. He wants to, he wants to show you something, and he wants to talk to you specifically, not through me, you know, all the time, but to you specifically. See, if you would say to me, I try to read scripture, but... I just don't understand it. You know, I read most of the time and I miss it. Then you want to be here for the series because we're going to we're going to talk about how to help you with that. So if you want to transform life, then that leads us to where we're starting today. So I want to ask you if it's all possible, don't miss one of the messages over the next five weeks. Now, I'm not saying you have to watch it Wednesday night because, as you know, you could watch this uh, Thursday or Friday or Saturday. But don't fall behind on the series. And in fact, if you could watch this on Wednesday night, everybody, I want to encourage you all to watch it starting at the same time so that we're all in the same place and working through it together. But it's if you miss one of the messages in the series, you're going to be lacking from where everybody else is. So make it a point to be a part every week, you know, on Wednesday night with us. Just schedule it. Put it in there. Because something will try to distract you from doing that. So this week, James chapter 1. Um, today we're going to begin by uh, looking at chapter 1, verses, uh, verse, starting with verse 22. Because this is the key to what I'm talking about today. And it's coming right from this verse. It's actually going to be verse 22 through about 26. But we're going to start at verse 22, James chapter 1. 
But before we do that, let's pray. Well, dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now. We pray, Lord, that you speak to our hearts, that you give us wisdom, that you help us to understand your word and how to understand you better in our lives. So, Lord, be with us now. Give us wisdom. Speak to our hearts individually. In Jesus' name, amen. James chapter 1, verses 22 through 26. Here's what it says. Do not be merely listeners to the word, and so deceiving yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like, is, is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. Verse 25, but whoever looks intently into the perfect law that is given, that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless let's stop there because that 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 whole thing there is is uh, is a mouthful so real quickly uh, I want to summarize three types of people that James identifies for us in this passage three types of people the first one are listeners who don't do, right? He talked about first, the listeners who don't do. These are people who like to learn, but they never do anything with it. Uh, I've known people in my life who can recite the Bible for you word for word, but they don't live what they read. I used to know a person who I could walk up to him and, and name a passage, and he would tell me word for word what it said. That's a, It's an amazing thing, and it's great to have that knowledge, but God wants us to be more than listeners. See, this person may know the word backwards and forwards, but they're not seeing any fruit in their lives because they are not doing what they read as well as knowing what it says. The second person he talks about, James talks about, is the doers who don't listen. The doers who don't listen, these are people who are task-oriented and they want to do, right? They want to go, okay, just point me and let me go. They want to be seen as doing good things. They, they are sometimes religious in nature, going through the motions without understanding why. And they, they, there's no transformation in their lives because they're not listening to God's leading. They are just like a pellet gun that shoots pellets out all over the place and they, they spray pellets, trying to cover everything without listening to directions. And the third person talked about in that passage is um, the listener that learns, grows, and does. And ultimately, this is the group that you and I want to be a part of. That's what that I want our church to be made up of people who do exactly this. This is God's desire for our lives, that this person who is blessed in their lives, um, because they're not only hearers of the word, but doers of the word. These people allow God's word to transform their lives and what's happening in their lives, because they understand that God is the transformer of our lives. So if you're not liking what you're seeing, turn it to him, turn towards him, and 
and he will transform you one step at a time. Now, here's the point, and, and it's a sentence I want to, re I'm going to, I can't even, uh, uh, here it is. It's a long sentence, and I, don't give me a grammar thing like it's a run on a sentence or there's no, you know, this kind of thing. So here it is. Spiritual blessings, happiness, does not come from what you know or what you do, but by allowing God's word to transform us into who he desires us to be, which comes with wisdom, understanding, and motivates what we do. I had to take a breath in the middle of that because I can't put it all together in, in one sentence, in a very small sentence. So, so uh, blessings and happiness doesn't come just from knowing and doing, but allowing God's word to transform us. That is the key to transformation in our lives. Now, here's another way to say it. Um, through truly listening and applying, we transform our lives, which fuels what we do. So by, by really listening to God, by applying it to our lives, it transforms our lives. And then we begin to do what we really are called to do because we're passionate about it and we're fueled by God to do it. It's true. See, when, when we allow God to transform our lives through his word, it motivates us to do what he is calling us to do. It's, it's In this first message of the series, we always introduce the whole series and because we talk about things that we're going to be talking about weeks from now. And I want you to get a, a, a feel for what we're talking about over the next several weeks. So we're going to be looking at simple method of for studying the Bible. And it comes to us in four parts. This is a simple way to study the Bible. And I want to, I want to encourage you to, to do this, okay? Today we're talking about the main idea about understanding what the author of the Word is trying to say. And over the next four weeks, we're going to study about um, content, observation, message, and application. It's a simple way to study. Um, it's known as a coma. Coma, you know, like when the person is in a coma, Content, observation, message, application. So I'm not telling you to be in a coma. I'm telling you to use the coma system of study in the Word. And it's, it's, it leads to spiritual awakening in our lives. So let's go back to James and ask uh, ourselves a question. And as we are talking about it today, I want you to think about which type of person you are specifically. Are you type one, two, or three person? So here's the first question. What leads people to be people who hear but do not do? What leads people to be people who hear but do not do? I think that there are people who hear the word, but they are already having in their mind uh, that they're going to be listeners. They have their mind made up. Here's what happens sometimes. Um, let's talk about the church for a minute. There are churches for a long, the, uh, 
Hmm. There are churches that have some people who have been Christ followers for a long time and they believe in the word. But they believe that my time is over for doing what God says. Now, we don't, we don't have that at, at our church. We have, uh, we have some old people at our church. You know who you are. I won't say your names, but you know what I'm saying, right? But they are always serving. They're always doing things for God. They're always a part of the church, you see. They don't come for the purpose of just sitting there and listening. They come and listen, thank goodness, but they also try to use what they're listening to in their lives. So we don't really have people, I think, that say, I, I'm not, I, I want to learn, but I don't want to do. Thank goodness for that. I mean, you have to understand that in our church, we have people that come from all different religious backgrounds. They come from all different places. We were all taught different things originally. Now we have devoted our lives to studying the Bible and what God says. And for us to do that, we have to lay down some of the stuff that we always maybe believed in the past that was more doctrinal of a specific body of believers than what God had to say. Did that make sense? I mean, how many people who are watching, if you if they're there, you can raise your hand. I can't see you, but I, I, I can feel that you're doing it. Who grew up in the Baptist church? Any of you? Come on. It's okay to admit it. Raise your hand. Okay. How about the Catholic church? The real church? <laughs> I grew up in the Catholic church. And some of you did as well. And uh, God help you. Because uh, you've learned a lot. And uh, you know what? You are people that know, know things. You know a lot. But some of what you know, just like every other religion out there, are not exactly with what God says. And it takes one to know one, so don't get mad at me. How about Methodists? Any Methodists? Yeah, yeah. Lutherans. How about Pentecostals? Yay! They really raised their hands. They jumped out of the chair when, when I asked that. So, so okay. So now you are attending what we call a non-denominational church. That means we don't have a pope, we don't have any, we, we don't have a doctrine of the actual church that we follow that our focus is on becoming um, Christ followers, believers in God, walking in the way of Jesus. And we do that by making his word, God's word, the Bible, is the authority in our lives. And that's it. Not Pastor Andy. And it's not the Pope. And it's not uh, some president of uh, some organization. It's Jesus who's in charge. It's God who's in charge. So if that rubs you the wrong way, take a deep breath and relax for a second. And, and uh, for those of you who might be watching me tonight for the first time, um, thanks, for, thanks for being a part. And if you're still with me, I haven't offended you yet. So keep going because um, I'll, you'll have opportunities to get irritated with me. But then as you study, I think you're going to see that God wants to do something in our lives, right? So there are people who hear, but they don't do anything. They're not doing. Um, sometimes 
um, scriptures come with preconceived ideas and people are willing to listen openly but there, there is a difference between listening openly and then stepping out, taking the next step, and doing what we hear. You know what I mean? It takes listening is okay, I'm willing to listen. Now, willing to do is another story. So here's what I want to get you to if you're that person this morning. If we're going to understand what's being said in scriptures, we have to go to the scriptures and leave our past ideas, everything that we learned when we were kids behind, and look at God's word in a fresh way, in a new way. When you read stories that you may have read a thousand times, don't know what the lesson is before time. How about us praying, God, show us today what you would have us know in this lesson, in this story. You know what I'm saying? Because if I only know what I always have known, then I'm always going to know the same thing. I know I said that, but that's 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 right. So I want us to go into a coma on the study series. So let me tell you what it isn't first. Let me tell you what it isn't. Deductive reasoning. It isn't deductive reasoning. You ever watch a mystery movie? Man, Shirley and I used to do that all the time. And right from the very beginning of the first five minutes, we would see what was going on. And then we'd stop the TV and say to each other, who did it? We only saw five minutes of it. We just saw a piece of it. And, and so deductive reasoning is this thing that makes us jump to conclusions before we get through the story, before we get through what's going on. So <laughs> just because we see a scene in our mind that we're reading, don't automatically go to the answer or go to what you think or who did it or what the, what the point is. Don't do that with yourself. We, we can't make deductions based on what we see or what we've learned in the past about what we're looking at now. That's called deductive reasoning. Now, that's, there's no place for that in studying Scripture. So let's leave that behind us, okay? Um, yeah, so that's it. So don't, don't bring any preconceived ideas about the story that you're about to read because all the names are true. Uh, this is not like Dragnet. You know, remember Dragnet? Here's a story. All the names have been changed to protect the innocent. No pro There's no protecting the innocent. Don't try to figure out what's what before time. Here's what we really need to practice. Not deductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning. I-N-D-U-C-T-I-V-E. -E. Inductive reasoning. That means we go to God's word, allowing it to speak into our lives without preconceived notions of what God wants to show us. So the first thing we have to, to be about is removing preconceived notions before we go to scriptures and keep an open mind. Because God uses scriptures all the time to teach us more than one thing. Right? So here's the here's the truth about preconceived notions, things that we think we know before we get there. 
Preconceived notions lead to pre-justification. It leads to prejudice. See, this is not only biblical, but in life. People have preconceived ideas about life. And then they go to scripture to justify what they already believe. You know, this is where, um, I guess I can, I can say this, but uh, this is where Nazism came from. Did you know that? It's where, it's where Nazism came from. It, it's where racism came from. It came from people who, using scriptures to support their own ideas. Uh, a person can make scripture say whatever they want to justify whatever they believe, but it's just not true. But if you go to scriptures without preconceived notions, you may see something very different. Uh, let, let's go to James 1, 22. This is what we started with, right? But just, just the first verse. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. You can actually deceive yourself if you go to the Word with a preconceived notion. It's self-deception. It's a way that you can give yourself justification for your actions. It's seeing what you want to see in a passage. It's like an alcoholic opening the Bible and saying, look, Jesus turned water to wine. It must be okay for me to get drunk. I mean, they had parties for days and people were drinking wine and getting more wine. It's got to be okay, right? See, the same person kind of says, Jesus wouldn't make wine if it was a sin to drink. So leave me alone about it. See, have you ever been thinking something and then heard someone speak and think? They said what I just thought. See, you find out later that it didn't happen the way uh, you thought at all. What you thought was said wasn't said the way you thought it was. You ever hear that? Like, what did you say? Can you tell me that again? That's what happens when we deceive ourselves. We hear what we think. Must be okay for me to get drunk. Jesus turned water and the wine did he use without sin. See, here's a point. It leads to spiritual blindness and deafness. That's what happens when you and I do that. When you and I pick what we want. Uh, James says this in verse 24. And after looking at himself, goes away. This was looking in the mirror, right? After looking at himself, goes away immediately, forgetting what he looks like. Because when we go to scriptures with preconceived notions, it causes us to not see things about ourselves. It's easy for a person to think things about themselves that are not true. This happens uh, to everyone. It happened to me one time. It happened to me. I worked for a company and I had about 200 people that I managed. And the company wanted to do a survey of employees. Now, I took this survey about myself and you know that 
I'm the greatest guy in the world to work for. I read my own survey and I was, I'm awesome. I'm an awesome person. I mean, I'm totally fair and uh, I'm hard when I need to be hard. I'm soft when I need to be soft. And I graded myself 50% hard, 50% soft. I was really, I, I saw myself as really the perfect leader. Can you imagine that? Well, the survey went out to the people and the results came back to me. And it said that I was 70% hard and 30% soft. I fired so many people that day. No, I didn't. I didn't. I'm, I'm kidding because they didn't answer. They didn't put their names on, on, the, on the thing. See, all I could think of was they didn't understand the question because they were wrong in how they answered. I was clearly the best boss ever, and I was completely fair, and they just didn't get it. <laughs> but the survey I did with my colleagues was just a mirror that showed me how I saw myself. And what I needed to work on was something that was shown to me by others who worked for me. Scripture is like that. Scripture shows us what God has for us as we hold the mirror to who we really are. Does this make sense or is it really deep or is it just something I'm, I'm babbling here? I hope it makes sense because, like I said, Sometimes the way I see myself is different than the way God sees me. And I have to work my way to get to a place where I accept what God says and take away all the pre-ideas, preconceived ideas I have about my. James says, when you read scriptures, you don't do anything with it. And it's like a man looking at himself in a mirror right away and forget what he looks like. So... God could tell you about you and you look at it fast and you get out of there and that's it. God shows us things about ourselves that could be changed, but then I'll say we because I don't want to say I. Uh, we ignore it and we close our minds to it and we very quickly walk away from that mirror called the Bible because uh, we don't want to hear it. I don't want to change. I'm perfect. I like me just the way I am. God is showing me this is scripture for someone else and not for me. It's spiritual blindness that happens. And preconceived ideas is what causes that because we don't want to deal with that we want to see we want God to see us as we see ourselves sometimes here's the second thing there it leads to stagnation you see I don't have to change anything I'm good just the way I am bringing transformation into my life sounds like work to me I don't need to be transformed because uh, I, I like me just the way I am. People think, Andy, uh, I have given my life to Jesus, and I'm good. And here's the thing. Accepting Christ is not the end of the journey. It's the beginning with him, because he has so much more for you. Now that you are a child of God, now that it's the beginning and he wants to not only give you eternal life, but he wants to give you an abundant life here on earth. So what leads people to be doers who don't listen? 
because we just went over the listeners without doing. So now what leads people to be doers without listening? Now, you think about what I'm about to say, and uh, I, I want you to little think about it a little. Because, uh, well, just think about it for a minute. This is the person who works at doing and don't do the work of becoming. Would rather do than become. Let me explain that. Because sometimes it happens even in church. People get busy doing work setting things up, being a part of something that God wants us to do. But then you don't allow God to have his way with you. When you read scripture, you look how Jesus interacted with the Pharisees and the Jewish leaders. These are people who are going through the motions of having faith but they weren't being transformed. Doing, but not becoming. In, in James uh, 1, 26, it talks about that. Here, here's what it says. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves, and their righteousness is, what's that word? Worthless. You see, self-deception comes when someone goes through the motions by doing the work and having a religious life without having a relationship with Jesus, without having a relationship with God, and allowing him to transform them from the inside out. See, life needs to be a series of transformation and if we're just going through the motions without transforming, then you just might find yourself in a place where you are a doer, but not a becomer. You're not becoming what it is that you're wanting to become. Spiritual blessings come from effort given to study from effort given to study. It's not going to be just by osmosis, by it just seeping over you. It's, it's going to take effort on your part. James 1.25 says this, But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. James says, if you're, if you're people who, who learn, grow, and do, you'll be walking in the fullness that God has for you. James uses a phrase intently um, here when he's talking about this because he, he's, he's really wanting us to do it with undivided, with our undivided attention. He wants us to look at, the, at God's word intently, really closely. And he wants us to be people who not only look at this, but are people who examine our own lives for something. He wants us to look at it and say, is this me really? I mean, what's your effort right now when it comes to studying scriptures up till today? What's your, what has your effort been? If you were to grade yourself from 1 to a 10 on effort, 
what would you give yourself? Now, don't say it out loud for anyone else in the room to know it, but really, from 1 to a 10, 10 being the best, 1 being the worst, what would you grade yourself when it comes to your effort in studying God's Word? Be truthful. And do you read with the intent that God wants to show you something specifically that you need to know. When you're reading, do you, do you, okay, God, what are you showing me about myself that I need to know? Here's the truth. Don't mistake the Bible for any other book you might be reading. This is God speaking to you. It's not someone who has studied this and want you to know uh, how to be a better person. This is God speaking to you. Uh, if, if I had a phone call and someone said, Hey, Andy, you have a call. It's Jesus on the line. If, if someone called you and said that, if someone said, hey, your name is Jesus on the line, would you take the call? Or would you be afraid to? I mean, I, I'm taking the call because I want to know what he has to say. Even if I don't like it, I want to know it. Because God desires to transform our lives, to change us for his purpose. The effort level you're bringing to God's word will determine your growth in God. Walk with him in the walk with God that you have. You know what I mean. Remember when I just read James 1.25, but whoever looks intently into the perfect law is given freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. James is saying, man, this is not just a one-time thing. A person has to continually seek God's word intently throughout their lives. And if we're doing that, if we're doing that, God is going to bless us. He's gonna He's gonna guide us in our walk. He's gonna help us in everything. Look, um I'm I'm running out of time and so um I'm gonna I'm gonna take about two more minutes here and finish up. But I want you to I want you to stay with us for this series because we're gonna go through this. In James 1 4 it says this let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. That is what James is getting at. That's what God is wanting for our lives. He wants us to study. He wants us to be people that make him a priority. He wants us to walk and learn from him and allow him to transform us from the inside out. So next week when we come together, I want you to, to continue to, to look at this first chapter of James. Read it. Read James chapter 1. Read it through. Not fast. I mean, I mean, I want you to just really read a little bit, read a few passages. Okay, God, what's happening here? What are you trying to show me here in this? What's happening in this scene? How do I, well, I want to make sure I understand because 
When we do it that way, we begin to shape our lives. And we begin to shape who we are. Here's the, here, here's the last Bible verse I want you to, to hear. It comes to us in Romans 10, verses 11 through 13. And so don't miss out on this. Don't miss this. It's at the end, and I know you've been listening for a little bit. As Scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jews, Jew and Gentiles. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. And then it says this in verse 13, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Maybe that's where you are tonight. Maybe you're watching this. Maybe you're not saved. Maybe you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life. I don't usually do this on Wednesday nights, but I want to lead you in a prayer right now. If you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, Ask him to come in, and he will. Repeat after me this prayer. And if you mean it with all your heart, the Bible says he will come in. He will save your life. He'll give you the promise of eternal life. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come to you now, we're going to pray the prayer of faith. So please, everyone, follow me and repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. I repent of my sins. I accept you now as my personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you prayed that for the first time, we believe Jesus came into your life. I'd love to hear from you to hear that that's what happened. I want to encourage you to join us back next week as we go into part two of James and we begin to look at how do I study the Bible in a way to be able to grow in the knowledge of him so he can walk me through my life. Be with us. New series starting for Christmas on Sunday. Come be a part with us. It's called The Promise, The Promise. God makes us promises, and he always keeps his promises. Talk to you later. Have a great day. Love you guys.